Good morning, everybody. I'm gonna just jump right in. So thank God, first of all, for the trees, because let me tell you, on this walk, when you're in the direct sunlight, whoo, and with those trees, man, it definitely brings a little bit of ease and breeze. So anyway, taking my morning walk. And um, I was thinking about um, Bible interpretation today. And I was thinking about how, you know, I think a lot of times we all look at a, a certain verse and we think, oh, you know, let me just sit with this and interpret it to see what it means for me. And although that that's, that's helpful and it makes sense, um, I think more and more as I begin to be guided through the Bible, it's that the Bible continues to explain itself through the Bible, if that makes sense. It's like one portion is explaining another portion, explaining another portion. And it's all one integrative piece. And, you know, I, I am not by any means a Bible historian or anything of the sort. I'm just somebody that has been led into the Word over my lifetime. And when I'm led to something, I sit with it, I meditate on it, and I let God lead me in whatever way the Holy Spirit wants to lead me so that I can understand the impact of whatever it was that I was trying to, that God's trying to show me in that moment during this particular season of my life. So, um, what I'm getting at is that sometimes we come across something that's odd or the interpretation is strange and perhaps it's far-fetched from something that we've ever heard about. And um, I don't know how I got to it, but it was like I was looking at a commentary on something and then I like jumped around from this to that and I came across this thing that was like basically saying that um, if in fact this is a possibility that you know mushrooms and different types of manna that were described in the Bible that that could have been psychedelic mushrooms okay and of course this was really really out there um, and again everybody can produce whatever research or experience that they have and relate it to something else so anybody can prove something to a certain measure to explain their point and I, I read all this and I was like okay like all right and uh, from the healing perspective, I just want to say that, again, um, I believe that Jesus was a true healer and that he was definitely using hands-on to touch people and to heal them. Um, given the times and given the location of where their pilgrimage was for healing, um, and the references in the Bible to different oils, meaning like frankincense, myrrh, that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, it would make sense that certain oils that God provided that would be for healing oils. And that, um, like, to me, that makes sense. Now, again, this article talking about the psychedelic purposes and how it's all God you know given and and then going into um olive oils and then um talking about you know cbd oils and that they're really effective and um that god ordained that and this is again where i'm saying there's a lot of information out there on the internet there's a lot of resources that are going to have studies and whatever and the reality is we still have to have that level of discernment and to let God through the Holy Spirit show us what is 
appropriate for us to entertain. And, you know, again, I'm just, I'm using this as an example. Um, when, I, when I look at the story and the struggle and the trauma and the drama and the lies and the manipulation that I have personally experienced by falling in love with an addict that was in recovery. Um, and now after his death and the awarenesses of all of the lies and all of the proof and the evidence that he was not who he said he was, okay? And I think about how drugs are so devastating to the individual, to couples, to families, to children, to generations. I mean, drugs really are a problem, okay? And it's the misuse of them and the addiction to them that continues to cause the problems. Um, but then again, I'm, I'm saying, let's take this slant that I was reading today about the psychedelics. And, you know, along my journey and all the different people I've met in the yoga community, there were many hippy-dippy, pot-smoking, um, you know, people that I met during my journey of, of that period in my life of being a yoga teacher. And there were many people that I knew that did psychedelics and all that. And that was not something that I wanted to participate in. And again, if I was already having a direct connection with God through the Holy Spirit, if I was already having visions and dreams, and I was already having a, a spirit-led faith walk with God, without drugs then why would i need drugs in order to start that process and again i speak on the people that i have known in in my lifetime that or psychedelic users they were really not there they were not grounded people they couldn't keep their life together they were constantly not okay and you know, they were always promoting how great the psychedelics were and how great their experiences were and blah, blah, blah. But the point is, if you look at their life as a whole, they were very selfish people. They were not about selfless, selflessly helping other people. They were really just all about themselves and where they're going to get their next psychedelic high. So, again, that does not sound like the fruits of the spirit of someone who is not drug induced. So I guess what I'm trying to bring this whole thing back to is just that there are many Bible interpretations. There are many people that are going to say this is the way and this is okay. And you know, and this eases my pain and this makes me feel better and this gave me a vision on a vision quest. All I'm saying is I'm sure those things are true in the sense that drugs can induce hallucinations and spirit quests and whatever. And, you know, I'm sure that those things happen. But when somebody writes and says that Jesus <laughs> was a psychedelic and Jesus was a mushroom, you know, I'm sorry, but that's just... In, in my opinion, it's just way out there. And um, is it possible? Sure, anything is possible. But is that the correct interpretation of the Bible as God intended it? I don't think so. And I really don't think that God wanted all of us to be around, sitting around in a drug stupor, hallucinating things, and like being like all mesmerized with a freaking plant or an animal for hours. Like, I just do not think the God of my understanding wanted us to do that. That just doesn't seem normal. So, there 
are people along this pathway of life that choose one thing such as psychedelics and they just dig in and they go this is the way this is the way and I'm just cautioning you I'm just saying you know just sit with God really ask the questions to God have a personal relationship with God and let the Holy Spirit guide you in a healthy way because I just don't think that psychedelics and you know stories of you know mushrooms and whatever are are the way to reaching God <laughs> that just it may be a way but I don't think it is the way and um, yeah so you know just sharing some of this insight and my opinion on it for whatever it's worth um, I hope you have a great day and I hope that you really lean on the God of your understanding which is the God of Israel Yehovah God our Father the one that loves us and wants us to have a healthy life by leaning on him and his son Jesus Yeshua the one that died on the cross was buried rose again and the one that conquered death um, none of the other avatars or religious leaders have conquered death like Jesus has so let's just keep that in mind as a fact um, and then lastly you know we were given the Holy Spirit through Pentecost and that Holy Spirit which is the Spirit of Yeshua can guide us into anything and everything that we want and it's a it's a comforting and calm and joyous experience it's not it's not about paranoia and oh my god where am I gonna get my next drug it has nothing to do with that so I hope you guys have a great day and enjoy the weather have a good one